Hey everyone, so I'm sure you're aware that Dolly 3 is now out in the wild and available to all of us. The hype train left the station pretty quick, and of course there are a number of people already declaring Midjourney dead. I wanted to take a more level-headed look at Dolly 3, which I do think is great, but it is still a few minutes away from prime time. Just as an FYI, to borrow an old meme, this is not the final form of Dolly 3. It still hasn't been integrated into ChatGPT4, although I do have an interesting little workaround there for you. Okay, let's dive in. So Dolly 3 is available to everyone completely for free if you go to bing.com forward slash create. Obviously the first pro in Dolly's corner is the fact that it is completely free. Uh, we are using a preview version right now. I expect that anything that I'm complaining about through this will be resolved with updates. Uh, prompting in Dolly is fairly simple. You can use natural language if you want. For example, uh, if I type in a photograph of the Seattle skyline at magic hour, after a few moments, we have what I presume are four geographically correct photographs of the Seattle skyline at magic hour. You can pick any one of these. Uh, let's grab this one and it pretty much is already upscaled. So uh, from there you can just download it. Now, the thing is that it does come in at a one-to-one -one aspect ratio and there is no way to change aspect ratios currently. So it is 1024 by 1024. Overall, I think it's a pretty decent image, although I will say that if you kind of start to zoom in a little bit on the image, you will see that it kind of takes on more of an illustrative look as opposed to a straight photograph. Now, one of the things that's been widely touted about Dolly 3 is the fact that it does text as exemplified in this image from at RetroPunk AI, uh, which is a Batman comic image with the balloon who stole my ice cream cone. That image was inspired by Amar Rishi's Batman page that he put together in about five minutes. Uh, the thing with this page is that it's actually not a page. It is instead a number of different images that have been comped together to create the illusion of being one page. So I did love that Batman page, but I did notice a few things about it that I wanted to confirm. So I headed over to ChatGPT and we quickly came up with sort of a loose sort of Tintin adventure style four panel comic strip uh, called The Lost Compass. So it didn't necessarily come out bad, but there is a lot of consistency problems in terms of style and character, of course, across the panel. Panels. It's close, but it's not quite there. In panel one, we have this fairly nice, uh, intricately rendered background, which actually sort of vanishes by panel two. What I do like is that it actually put these panel breaks here and here. I thought that was actually kind of a cool touch. And the fact that uh, Alex, our character here, is actually breaking frame, it's a nice touch. That said, the text is definitely a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, in this line, it's supposed to be, according to the map, the Temple of Tides should be right around here. Uh, it does not come out quite reading that solidly. And then in panel two, uh, we actually have dialogue that's close, but it's just cut off by that 1024 by 1024 uh, aspect ratio. The text could easily be blanked out in Photoshop and then redone in Illustrator, so that's not that big of a deal. Uh, the larger part definitely is uh, the change in style and the lack of consistent character, although Alex is pretty close in all honesty. I think that's kind of more or less the trick with the Batman strip is the fact that Dali knows who Batman is, and so we are able to stay consistent with that character. Although again, I think the art styles actually change pretty dramatically between panel to panel. Uh, by the time we hit the Joker, we're definitely in sort of an 80s Brian Boland look, uh, the killing joke uh, for reference. If anyone wants to read it, it's really good. For some more text experimentation, I had Dolly 3 create the website for Midjourney because, you know, Midjourney needs a website. I don't know, maybe you look at this, Midjourney. It did get Midjourney's name here. I think that's a Hypersans font. And it did give me buttons for Imagine, Reroll, uh, Very, sort of, and then Rary as well. I'm not sure what Rary is. And then uh, a port ratio. I actually thought this one was pretty cool just from an image standpoint as well. It does go to show that Dolly is capable of producing some pretty awesome abstract art results. I did run across a cool image of Bruce Lee as the Terminator by Cyber Yogi, so I had to give that one a shot. And I ended up getting this out of it, which I wasn't initially completely blown away by, but as I started looking at it more, I, there's a lot of elements in here that I really do like. Um, the pointillism in the shadows, for one, is pretty nice. Uh, it just does sort of feel uh, 
that it lacks one or two steps of rendering that would really push it over the top. When I ran it as a film still, we ended up with this, which is actually super awesome and makes me really sad that we never got a Bruce Lee Terminator movie. So one thing to keep in mind is the fact that we are just using Dolly 3 natively. The real powerhouse of this whole thing is going to be when it is hooked up to ChatGPT and we can have essentially conversations with the AI image generator. That said, there is kind of an interesting workaround that gives you a taste of what's coming up. Uh, if you download the Bing mobile app, you actually have ChatGPT4 and it is connected to DALI. So I gave it this mid-journey image that I've previously used here and had it analyze it and then write a prompt for me based off of that image. Now, it is interesting to note that in image number two, it actually blurred out the face. Uh, that's something that I had noticed that Bing Chat kept repeating to me is that it will blur out faces. And indeed it did here, although it didn't for the other images. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. And just as a quick note, there is no way to change the image once it has been generated. I asked Bing Chat to change the face into that of a beautiful female. It initially told me no, because beauty is a subjective opinion. And yeah, I can't necessarily disagree with that. So I asked it to change it to a female face and it said no again. So ultimately I just asked, can you change anything about the image? And it admitted, no, it can't change anything about the image. Uh, that is something that I think we'll probably see once we have official connection between Dolly 3 and ChatGPT4. But for right now, that's not a way to in-paint or change anything within your image. Right now, you get what you get. So circling back to text, I do feel kind of bad considering that Ideogram came out just a few weeks ago and essentially stole the thunder on AI-generated correct text. Um, for example, there was this image that I rolled up for a game that I'm playing called Alan Wake. I did a novelization from it. For some reason, Ideogram decided it was written by someone named Danka Mindy, which I think is hilarious. So Danka Mindy is my new pen name for everything. Dolly 3 came back with this, which is pretty solid. It got Danka Mindy's name right. It got Alan Wake right. And it actually even included uh, a supernatural mystery up here. It's a little on the garbled side, but still that wasn't the prompt. So, you know, Props to you, Dolly3. Playing around with a mobile game UI kind of thing. Uh, this was for an iPhone game that I made up called uh, The Cult of Dante, very much in the style of Diablo. Um, yeah, overall, it looks really solid. The text, again, not great up here. Uh, fingers, though, one, two, three, four, and thumb, one, two, three. But I guess he's like, playing with his thumb, eh, whatever. I mean, I'll take it. It also generated up this lunatic who, given the background, is clearly taking this game far too seriously. I will say that Dolly 3 definitely does do late 80s anime very well. And it's a little subtle thing, but the fact that we have text and it gets the aesthetic of the yellow subtitles, it's very chef's kiss to me. So well, well done there. Another interesting aspect is that Dolly 3 does not seem to have any interest in obscuring famous faces. Uh, for example, this is a photograph of Jimi Hendrix playing guitar on a Caribbean pirate ship in the year 1780, which would make for some awesome sea shanties. As you can see, the image is very clearly Jimi Hendrix and actually props to the fact that it got that he's a lefty. Most AI generators actually miss that little detail. With the same prompt in Mid Journey, we end up with this, which in my opinion, aesthetically and in terms of photographic quality is much better, but it doesn't look like, it looks like somebody kind of cosplaying as Jimi Hendrix and he's a righty in this one. Continuing on with another Mid Journey comparison, this is a recurring character on the channel. This is our cyberpunk woman with long white hair uh, in a snowy cyberpunk out. The exact same prompt in Dolly 3 gives us these images, which I think are serviceable. They're pretty decent. Um, I do feel that it just kind of turns very illustrating though in the features of the face. Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, I don't think it's bad. I just think that Mid Journey has just a little bit of extra sharpness and spank for lack of a better word. That said, I think there's still a lot of fun that you can have with Dolly 3. For example, in this image by at Hypron, who, you know, I mean, that's, this is hilarious. Or at Turnleaf, who put this together, which it makes me laugh. I don't know. It's an adorable bear. And I was really impressed with this image from at Shaw Set, where uh, you can see the actual Breaking Bad logo 
back here, uh, as well as the Funko Pop. And presumably Walter White is spelled right. We can't actually see the end of it considering, you know, he's holding the blue sky there. But the fact that Dolly juggled that text along with the depth of field, yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. So is it time to cancel your Mid Journey subscription or your Leonardo subscription or any of the other image platforms that you might use and exclusively use Dolly 3? No, it is not. There are just some fundamental things that Dolly 3 is missing right now. Things like in and out painting. Out painting actually really surprises me considering that Dolly 2 was kind of the king of that. Locked aspect ratios are another one and the fact that you really can't image prompt without kind of circumnavigating the system currently. That said, we still haven't seen the full potential of Dolly 3 yet as it has not been hooked into ChatGPT 4. Ultimately, I do think it's a lot of fun. And honestly, the more image generators you have in your back pocket, the better. You're just taking elements from correctly generated text in Dolly and using them as part of your mid-journey Leonardo or stable diffusion compositions via photo editing software. I mean, that alone is worth the price of free. If you have a moment, let me know in the comments what you think of Dolly 3. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.